I ain't gonna hold you. So tonight we go through chapters 50 and 51 from Reverend Ike's Secrets for Health, Joy, and Prosperity for you. So chapter 50, uh, 51, he goes into some really good principles. So we're probably going to get a little bit more uh, detail than we normally do, but it won't run longer than 10 minutes. Chapter 50, you can get there from here. The verse is, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8 and 32. The principle is the only thing you need to know is yourself. When you know yourself, then you'll know everybody and everything you need to know. All your good desires will be fulfilled. He goes on to say, we all know that some people seem to struggle and strain through life more than others. Some people think that God loves one person more than another. Some people think that some other person is holier than they are. But let me tell you, life does not give more good to one person than it will give to another. If it seems, if life seems to be unfair to you, it is because you have not opened yourself up to receive. All good is already present. All good is ready for you to enjoy when you open yourself up to receive. You will have and enjoy all the good things in life. Now, this goes against uh, some basic teachings that we have heard about there being a chosen people or God being um, more geared or more protective of some people. But Reverend Ike really breaks it down and makes it clear that life does not give more good to one person than it can give to another. And God, uh, God doesn't love any one person over another as well. And I think that's really transformative. He goes on to say, you should want and enjoy all the good things in life. The things that make life more enjoyable. This power to have the good you desire is within you. It is within easy reach if you understand the universal principles that are involved, the principles of mind science. Once you accept the principles of mind science, you can use them to be, do, and have what you want. In fact, it is not even necessary to understand how they work. Years ago, Thomas Edison was asked what electricity was. He said, I do not know, but I use it. And man has electricity ever since uh, to make and man has used electricity ever since to make life easier and more enjoyable. The principles of mind, mind science are the same. They are there for you to use. Mind science will work for you as long as you accept it, believe it and work with it. The Bible says he, the Lord, the law of the mind is no respecter of persons. Acts 1034. That means that the law of mind will work for you. Not just for the rich, not just for the poor. It'll work for everybody who works it. Then he goes on to break down the principles of mind science, which is the basis for his theology and this book. It says the basic principles of mind science are set forth in the following Bible verses. As a man thinks, so is he. This means that as a man thinks of himself, so he experiences life. If a person thinks sickness, failure, poverty, unhappiness, and hate, he brings those things into his life. If a person thinks positively, positively about himself, mentally identifying himself with health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money, he draws these things into his life. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12 and 2, is the mind science key for changing one's experience. It means that if you want a new experience, get a new idea of yourself. Get a new idea of yourself. Change your life by changing your self-image. You only need to change your mind about yourself and things will change. Not till then. You don't need to change the world or others. Change your mind about yourself and others will change. Or at least you will be so different that it won't even make a difference. Mind science teaches man to build and maintain an image of himself in his mind, already being, doing, and having the good that he desires. The ideal, the ideal self-image in the mind inspires and motivates the one in whose mind it dwells and commands the good which it mentally represents. The self-image leads to its own fulfillment. You shall know the truth of who you are in God and who God is in you. This truth that we deal with is not religious truth. As such, it is not dogmatic. Doctrinal truth, it is the truth of you. It is the truth of each individual, the truth of all mankind. Once you accept the presence and power of God in you, you can travel the path of self-discovery. You can be entirely in control of your life. You can be the one person you want to be. You can do what you want to do and you can have what you want to have. He says it's your responsibility. It is your responsibility to discover your true identity. This is your responsibility as an individual. Today, especially, so many people are searching for what they call their true identity. Many times they give themselves an identity by accepting a label or stamp that someone else has put on them. It is rather popular, for example, for people who are monetarily poor to identify themselves by saying, well, I'm underprivileged, 
But I'm telling you that if that is the identity you give yourself, you're in trouble. You must decide for yourself who you are, what you want out of life. You must not unquestionably accept the label or stamp that government agencies or any groups give to you. Not only do you have within yourself the God power of self-discovery, you have the responsibility of self-discovery. No matter where you are in life, stop and ask yourself these questions. What do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? Leads us to chapter 51, titled The Truth About You. The verse, and the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, 10 through 11. The principle, the truth of Jesus is the truth of you and the truth of me. Now, this is where Reverend Ike get, gets a little bit controversial Um but he does break it down for us. So we're just going to go through it. He says to some people, Jesus Christ was God's only son who lived 2000 years ago and is going to come again. But my ideas about Jesus are different. That's why it interested me the other day when a group of uh, youths walked up to me on the street and handed me a religious leaflet. One of them said to me, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Are you ready to meet him? You know what I said to him? Now, wait just a minute. In the first place, I'm not serving any God that goes and comes. This God that you're talking about that goes and comes and absents himself from the earth, I'm not concerned with him. When I said that, their eyes popped out of their mouths wide open. They didn't expect that. I told them the God that I serve is spoken of in the hymn that says he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. The Christ comes again when a man remembers who he is in God and who God is in him. I'm here to tell you that Christ is not just a man or just God's only son who was here 2000 years ago and went away. Christ is not a dead man on a cross. Christ does not live in the altar of a church. In this ministry, we teach that Christ is the presence of God in me and the presence of God in you now and forever. Christ is the ever living presence of God in man. The only begotten son refers to the one divine sonship of mankind. Divine sonship is not exclusive to the person Jesus, but it is inclusive to each individual in the whole world. God so loved mankind that he gave all mankind divine sonship. You see, Jesus never claimed to be God's only relative. The theologians gave us that idea. You have to be careful of what the theologians tell you. Reverend Ike is a popular for saying that. Um, the cemetery and the seminary. He gets the cemetery mixed up with the seminary. And he believes that a lot of dead ideas are in the seminaries. So this is one of those where he teaches you and it kind of goes grain against the grain of the basics that we've been taught. He goes on to say, but is it not enough for Jesus to be the only one to realize and demonstrate the presence, presence of God within? Is the, It is the possibility and responsibility of every man to come to the same realization and demonstration of his own destiny as Jesus did. Each man must come to know the truth of his own divine sonship. And until you know this, you don't know the truth of Jesus. The affirmative treatment is right here and right now. I accept the Christ presence in me. I accept God presence in me. I accept the God power in me. I go forth into life to let this God presence and God power flow out of me as health, happiness, love, success, prosperity and money. I am the perfect realization and demonstration of the love, joy, love and joy of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Then he says, a thought. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but think you can't, it's almost a cinch you won't. Life battles don't always go to the stronger or fastest person. But sooner or later, the person who wins is the one who thinks he can. And that's also a little note about being stubborn. But that is the uh, this chapters for 50 and 51. If you like the quotes and affirmative treatments, I have a segment on the podcast where I do those separately as well. Thank you for listening. Enjoy.